welcome, and we're going to be doing another live session of the Best Real Estate Investing Advice Ever show. I'm with Theo, and we are going to focus today's episode on the follow-up from last week, where I talked about the text message I got about a $64 million investor, so I will follow up on that as well as other stuff we've got going on, and answering your questions that you have on apartment syndication. We have a couple questions that have come up that we wanted to address, mm -hmm. and we will do that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start recording. Best ever listeners, how you doing? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. I'm Joe Fairless. This is the world's longest running daily real estate investing podcast. We only talk about the best advice ever. We don't get into any fluffy stuff. And with us today, Theo Hicks, we're going to do an, uh, another episode of Follow Along Friday. How you doing, Theo? I'm doing good, Joe. Good to be back. Yeah, and today is Friday, and you know what? It is in the future. Because uh, today, as people are listening to it, the day it goes live on the podcast, we're at the conference. Yeah. We're at the conference. Um, and uh, so if you're not in Denver, Colorado this Friday, then uh, I hope you're living vicariously through us and learning uh, real estate in some form or fashion, as I know you are, because you're a loyal best ever listener, and that's just what you do. Uh, with us today, we also have Jack, who you might not be able to see. Jack is our, or my, and my fiance's 12-pound Yorkie, and he is just snoozing away right now uh, in the office. So as long as someone doesn't knock on the door, <laughs> you won't hear Jack. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about entrepreneurial endeavors that I got going on, and then give you a status update on those things. In particular want to follow up on the uh, $64 million text message conversation that ended up happening this past week. I know on last week's episode, we had uh, discussed how I got a text message. Well, we talked about how to condense our goals from achieving them in one month instead of 12 months. Yep and brainstorming ways to do that. We talked all about that. Highly recommend going to listen to that if you haven't already. Uh, and then one a thing that came out of it was I received a text message a couple days prior to that, and they said, um, hey, I've got an investor, a out-of-country group, $64 million I've got to invest. And I said last week, probably about 5 to 10% chance yep. of something coming uh, from that, and so we'll talk about how that conversation went with the group and next steps, as well as all the other stuff we got going on in the business from deal pipeline to uh, asset management, and then answering questions that you have submitted. And if you have any questions, then how you submit those questions is a couple ways. One, if you're watching us live via Facebook, then you can simply write down uh, the question in the comment section below of this video. If you are listening to us on the podcast, then you can email info at joefairless.com. That's info at joefairless.com. And we will receive your questions and then um, most likely answer your question on the show. So how do you want to approach it, Theo? Well, I want to know about this text message. You're talking about it. I want to know what went down. <laughs> yeah, well, we had, as I said, um, you know, the more inquiries and more opportunities you have, the more likely something's going to pan out. And uh, last week we talked about how if, if I am going to complete the goal of, 12, of, of eight deals, which is my and my business's goal for this year, eight deals in 2017 in 12 months, then um, it will be $60 million yeah. in equity that's required because that assumes the two deals that we have under contract right now uh, in total over 500 units will close next month. So I'm assuming that's going to happen the the um, property condition assessment has come back fine, 
environmental looks good on both those things. So I, I assume that's going to happen. Assuming that, got six deals, need six, 10 million a piece, 60 million bucks. Uh, and just so happened, coincidentally, got a text message from a client of mine, also is an investor in our deals, and he said, I've got this lead, not sure w what it's all about, but they want to jump on a call. So that brings us to this conversation. And we, uh, my business partner and I, jumped on a call with my client and this representative. And turns out this representative um, has a relationship with someone at an, a large institution who has clients uh, who have 30 million, not 60, turns out it was 30 million to invest. Now, we got to follow the breadcrumbs of about four different levels, right, to four different rooms uh, to actually get to the, actual, the, the individuals. So that's why after speaking to them, and I'll tell you more about the conversation, I, I'd say I'd lower it from 10% to about 4 to 6% possibility okay. of something happening. But there is that 4 to 6%, and we talked about... Um, the what they're looking for, what his clients clients were looking for, and they're looking for exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. We just have to determine if it makes the makes sense one for for us to partner with them because they might want to be whole owners of it. They might just be looking for a broker. We are not brokers yeah. versus someone who helps them with the business plan has a team and they can plug in their equity and then we partner on a deal uh, because that's how we partner. Two is because there are two levels of go-betweens, everyone needs to be compensated. Therefore, the deal has to make sense enough to uh, compensate everyone who is responsible for putting the deal yeah. together. and. That's something we'll have to identify as well. And we think we have uh, an opportunity that they would be interested in. But it depends. We haven't had a direct conversation with the money people. Uh, therefore, we need to, one, give them an NDA, non-disclosure mm -hmm. agreement, that uh, says, we're going to share with you this particular deal. You or any of your affiliates may not purchase this deal for a period of time uh, after we share it with you. So we, we will need them to sign that because we don't have it under contract yet. So we're going to um, have them sign it, gauge their interest, and then if they are interested, then we'll talk to them about it. If not, then we'll understand why, we'll need to understand why they're not and then go from there. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, with them until we until we know what they're looking for and after they send, s sign the NDA, then we're simply going to send them the opportunity. And so the amount of time invested, here's, the, here's, here's one of the points. The amount of time invested from us is minimal. Mm -hmm. I've, spent, I've spent 15 minutes on a call last week with the representative's representative and I will spend another 10 minutes or so uh, with the NDA back and forth and with sharing, writing the email to share with them the actual deal. After that, you know, 25 minutes invested is well worth a 4 to 6% chance of getting $30 million in equity to, to, to do some deals. Uh, so the... That, that is one important aspect because a lot of, if someone's listening, when, when people are listening, um, they might think, well, if you got 4 to 6% chance, why even try? Because it's, a, it's the, the cost-benefit analysis oh, yeah. is, it makes sense. But if, if they were requiring significant amount of my time, I, I, I would not pursue it. I wouldn't pursue it at this point because it's too flimsy. Uh, but it doesn't require a significant amount of my time, therefore it makes sense to pursue.
It's a lot, it's a lot, something nice like this. So it's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, I mean, I know it's a $30 million opportunity. And you said it, it's, it'll take about, let's say, half an hour of your time to, 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 to potentially get the, the 4 to 6% chance of it actually occurring. So if you weren't as experienced as you are now, and you were kind of just starting out, would you approach this differently than you're approaching it now? Well, I wouldn't have a group that was asking us for opportunities to partner sure, if I wasn't true. experienced. Yeah. So, so I guess that parallel doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing hearing more about that and see if that probability goes up after you send the NDA. So they're, they're not asking for a full underwriting package. You're going to send them the, the, the operating... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them the our right. underwriting. I'm going to send them how we're looking at the deal, okay. the projected profits, the actual deal itself, you know, address, mm -hmm. unit mix, all the details, and then uh, that's it. I mean, that, that's and our business plan, which is outlined in uh, you know the the document and our company overview. So that, that's all. That's all. Okay. Send them. So. Just stuff. It's stuff that we have already. We're not creating anything unique, because we will likely be buying this property. Uh, it's a quasi off market deal. I don't want to talk about it too specifically uh, because we don't have it under contract. But uh, it is. It's a deal that's not on the market right now. Okay. And uh, they have come back to us specifically about the property. The the. The owners of the property have. Okay, awesome. So I think this is a, you know, we're talking about potentially getting $30 million in, in money raising. This is a good transition. Something else we want to talk about, which is a couple, your, your deal pipeline right now. I'm giving people an update on that and kind of explaining how you approach that. Yeah, we have a spreadsheet that lists out all the different categories or, yeah, categories that we evaluate deals on from internal rate of return to type of financing, the type of equity that would be best, for example, is it syndicated or is it private equity? Because private equity is, is um, looking for something a little bit different from syndication where you know, syndication high net worth individuals, uh, private equity would be institutional money. Okay. So what, what type of equity is required? Um, and if you're wondering what would be the differences, high net worth individuals through syndication will want to make sure that there is a cash on cash return as a priority uh, and the internal rate of return is healthy. Uh, whereas private equity, the cash on cash return isn't as important as the exit is. Uh, they want to make sure that they, they don't require as high of cash on cash annually, but they do want to make sure the project makes a good chunk of money. Whereas high net worth individuals typically like to have the higher cash on cash return and a good return at the end. Okay. Um, but you kind of balance those two. Plus, high, plus private equity uh, simply is an unlimited amount of money. So we can do larger deals with a private equity firm like a $80 million private equity oh. check versus a syndication of raising it from private individuals, $100,000 a pop, takes a, takes a lot of people to get to $80 million. Yeah. What, um, I don't think we've ever... Talked about private equity before. Maybe we need to take a take a take a stamp there, and we talk about how you find private equity investors at a later date, or we can talk about it now. Up to you. Well, we should talk about it after we actually close a deal with a private equity okay. firm. Yeah, we have not closed a deal with a private equity firm. All of our deals have been either with a syndicated group of high net worth individuals, or an individual, or their family who have partnered with us. Okay. So when we partner with a hedge fund or a private equity group, assuming that I don't have an NDA, <laughs> then, then we'll talk about that. And if I do have an NDA, then I can talk conceptually about it, yep. more so in detail versus being hypothetical. Because exactly. I, I want to talk about stuff I've done. Okay. Uh, so as far as the pipeline goes, so we look at all different uh, most important things for deals. And we've identified, as of this point, four opportunities that we're excited about. One opportunity is 
near some properties we already own. Very near some properties that we already own. And I have to be a little bit cryptic about these four opportunities because we, we don't have anything under contract. But that is something we're very excited about. A, another, and there, because we can have economies of scale with management. That's why we're yep. very excited about it. And we know the market very well. We, we know the sub-market very well. Uh, another opportunity is the one I just mentioned. The a third opportunity is an opportunity that is in a market that we haven't invested in yet, but is a solid, very solid market. Turns out we have had more competition. We, we've, we've put in our offer and we got feedback. There were over 30 offers mm -hmm. on this property wow. and we weren't even in the top 10. <laughs> so, uh, what we're what we're going to do? What do you do in that scenario? Well, you don't continue to increase your price just to win the deal, but what you can do, if you have the uh, risk tolerance to do so and expertise, is offer non-refundable earnest money day one. And so, what we're likely going to be doing is offering non-refundable earnest money over $300,000 worth day one uh, because we have had the right team members already walk the property. Okay. Uh, and there is an environmental risk associated to this, but uh, meaning if oil were to be found underground, then that would that would cause us either a delay in financing or, um, you know, there or a gas leak or something rather that or we would need to remedy it beforehand and it could get a little tricky. But um, we feel confident in offering the non-refundable earnest money day one, and we will be doing so. But we won't be increasing our offer price. Um, we'll see, you know, we'll see where we're in that. I'd say we have about a 20% chance of winning that okay. deal. Uh, and then another deal is in Dallas-Fort Worth, where most of our deals are. And it's just a solid, solid opportunity we're going to be pursuing that. So we've got four deals right now. This is the, the first time you've had, this is the first time we've had this many deals in, in your pipeline before? No. We... We, the spreadsheet is probably 60 properties, and that's, that, that's just properties that we have taken time to underwrite because it met our initial qualifications, or, or passed the, the initial qualification. We're always offering on properties, uh, but these four in particular have risen to the top after looking at the 60. So we've always got a, a pretty healthy pipeline. Of deals because of this podcast, I get a lot of off-market opportunities, and also because of the broker relationships that we have, uh, we we get a lot of a lot of opportunities. But um, the the four deals we have now are definitely um, very promising. So what happened? <clears throat> what what'll happen if you get all four deals and they all land around the same same time period? What are you gonna do about that? Time to be resourceful. <laughs> that's that's the um, the 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 balance that I have to I have to make sure we we uh, you know I don't know we have to stay balanced I guess uh, because if we go lean one, too far over to the left where we've got too many deals and not enough money then we don't work out and we fall on the ground if we're too much to the right where we got too much money but not enough deals, then we're not optimizing the business and you fall uh, because you're not optimized properly. So you want to stay in balance. And I haven't figured out exactly the art and science that, because it is an art and a science, and I, I have mentioned on previous videos and conversations through this podcast that we should always have 30% more money verbally interested mm -hmm. to what we do before we go find deals. 
And I wholeheartedly believe that, especially if you're starting out. However, when you have four opportunities, and then let's say we get all four of those opportunities, uh, as of this moment, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm not sure where all four, where the money for all four of the deals will come from. I don't know. But I can tell you what happened last time we were in this situation. It was three months ago. Okay. And we were looking at two opportunities. And those, both of those opportunities look really good. And my business partner and I, we were like, well, what are we going to do? I said, well, I'm very confident in closing, having the equity to close one. But it's going to be a stretch, but I'm, I, we can pull it off. I'm not exactly sure how for two. Well, guess what? The One of our um, investors, he wrote the check for, or he's writing the check, assuming we close next month, for 12 million bucks. And he's buying both of them with us. And we're partnering with him on it. Something like that will need to happen if we get all four of the deals. And I'm confident something like that will happen. Fortunately, through this podcast and through friendships, I have enough connections where I'm confident I can bring you know, four deals worth of equity, which would be probably about $30 million worth of equity. Uh, to, because one of them is kind of small. One of the deals is kind of small. Um, and that's the one that is close to all of our other properties. That's why we're, we're looking at it. And that's what will happen. Okay. So it sounds like you've, come, you've kind of been doing this long enough that you've, that you've built the relationships and you, you've built the relationships to be confident that if you, if you need to kind of go above and beyond what you've done in the past, you're, you're confident you're able to do that based off of your you know, relationships and, and, and past resourcefulness, mm -hmm. basically. And current performance through referrals of existing investors, which drives the whole darn thing. And that's, that's the whole yeah. thing. The, the, ref, the sources for equity come from referrals from existing investors. That's the primary source of equity. And I, I know that because I've done a word cloud with how people, uh, current investors, have uh, heard about me and I've, I became friends with them prior to them investing and I, I found that they were from referrals from people who are currently investors. So yeah, okay. it, it, all, it all ties together. And I don't recommend doing that if you're, I don't recommend taking a leap of faith to this degree if you're just starting out because the downside, let's talk about the downside. Mm -hmm. If I don't pull, up, pull it off, if we do get all four deals and I don't pull it off, one, reputation plummets, which is long-term disadvantage. Short-term disadvantage is we'll likely offer earnest money hard day one. Well, that's a significant amount of money out of pocket that is gone. And it's, it's gone forever. So uh, there are financial downsides short term with money and long term reputation if we get all four deals and I'm not able to pull it off. So I don't recommend doing that if you're just starting out. But if you have a network established and you have multiple ways, not just one, multiple ways to get the funds that are required for the deals, then you know you take a calculated risk. Yeah. And we're just taking I think a smaller leap of faith if yeah. you're starting out instead of a, a big one. I think I think it's good that I just said, I don't know exactly what I would do if this happened, but you know, these are kind of the, 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 the pre-mortem type of mm -hmm. uh, analysis I've run, just to know if, if, if this happens, I'll do this, this, and this, and you know, I, I know that I have these resources and these relationships in order to potentially you know, get to where I need to be, mm -hmm. but the, I, I think the I don't know is huge, and I think for, you know, for, for investors, sometimes it's, you don't really know what you're going to do, but you know you have the relationships, the resources, that if something were to happen, you can essentially have the faith that you're able to figure it out. Yeah. And what I'm doing along the way is I'm continually talking to my partners who might partner with me on raising the money. And I'm asking them, where are you at? What's your minimum? What's your maximum range? Okay. And then I'm, I, so I, I'm putting the pieces together in the background and I have uh, an idea, but I don't exactly know where it's going to come from. But I know some of the sources, some of the main sources. So it's, it's, not, so it's not that I'm blindly going about it. I'm methodically going about it, but I, I really don't know exactly yeah. where it's coming from. And, and that is important because there is uncertainty in 
being an entrepreneur and and putting deals together, but you have to set yourself up for success. Yeah, exactly. And and position yourself for success. And sometimes it does happen. Sometimes it doesn't happen. But we've got to set ourselves up and and stack the deck as much as possible, leading up to the you know the 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 point of is this happening or is it happening? Well, one clarifying question. I think this is what you uh, what you meant, but so we say min and max range. So you'll ask someone's like, hey, like if we were to raise to partner and raise money for a deal, what's the max amount of money you think you can raise? What's the minimum amount of money you think you can raise? Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because what I do, and I only do this with my clients, only with my clients in my uh, program. I I have some of my clients who want to um, get in on the general partnership side, so they'll reach out to their network, and then they'll come in the deal uh, and have part ownership in the deal on the general partnership side for bringing in more investors. Okay. Um, so that's that's the approach we take. Is there anything else that, that, that you can think about that we didn't, we didn't touch on in regards to how you approach your, your deal pipeline, these, these four deals, and kind of the leap of faith you're taking? No, I think we covered it. Okay. So we've got a question that was asked, especially on... On, on BP, but the question is, and it's about earnest money. So we've never, I don't think we've ever talked about earnest money before. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the question verbatim is, when the time comes for earnest money, if you don't have funds in place yet, do you pay that yourself or defer it somehow until after funds have been raised? Or do you raise funds before and make this a moot point? So I guess it's yeah. yeah. You don't you don't raise your funds before you you have the earnest money stage done. Mm -hmm. You raise the funds after you have it under contract and you're um, you're well into the due diligence period. Now you don't raise all the funds, but you can for your earnest money ask an investor to put it up. That's what I did on my very first syndicated deal. I asked an investor who said he was investing 50000 to simply put it up early. And he did. He put in his 50000 He asked that I uh, write him an email saying that I was personally guaranteeing the 50000 And I did. I wrote him an email. I said I will personally guarantee the 50000 if anything happens to it whatsoever. And that was good for him it was because of our relationship. Uh, and we weren't going non-refundable on that deal. Okay. It was, there were contingency upon contingency built into that first deal's contract. If the financing didn't look good, if the wind blew the wrong direction, I could have canceled the contract. So it, there, it wasn't at risk for 30 days. And I had the calendar printed out with the day that it was going hard, and I certainly made sure that it didn't until we had everything in place. Would, so would you recommend someone doing their, their first deal to, I guess it would, it would depend on how much money they have, but if someone that was in, in your situation that maybe didn't have $50,000 laying around, which I'm sure most people, would you recommend them not doing a non-refundable down payment for the first property or yeah, situational? Yeah, I, I would recommend not doing a non-refundable okay. deposit for sure if it's your first deal. Absolutely. I don't recommend... Uh, I don't, I'll rephrase it. I don't recommend going non-refundable day one if it's your first deal. And really, I don't recommend ever doing it, but sometimes you have to to be competitive and if you have the right team members, it's certainly a competitive advantage because you can go in at a lower purchase price, and you're simply putting money up beforehand, but you're gonna spend, you're gonna put that money in anyway, uh, if you know you're gonna close. Uh, it, that is a 2.0 multifamily syndication tactic, not a 1.0 syndication tactic. And as far as just to to um, close out the earnest money with the investor, you might be wondering, well, what what do they get? for putting it up early. Do they yeah. make interest on their money? Do they get additional ownership? Well, depends. Depends on how you negotiate with them. I didn't compensate this individual anything. Um, no extra fee, 
no additional ownership. He put up the earnest money two months before other investors funded the deal. So he had his money out two months. Uh, if they ask for, if you think you need a little carrot to dangle out in front of them, then maybe say uh, you'll give them you know, additional $5,000 or $1,000 at closing, $500 depending on the size of the deal, or tell them you'll pay them 10% on their money um, for the year, and then depending on however long you have it, and you can pay them that little bit of interest at closing. I don't recommend giving them additional ownership in the deal, because okay. that could be, I mean, I, it'd be better off financially to pay them a couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or something versus additional ownership, which will likely equal many, many, oh, yeah. many thousands of dollars. Uh, so th those, those are a couple ways. Now, that's different from your proof of funds person which I have a video at apartmentsyndication.com. If you're having trouble with proof of funds, I won't go into that now. You mm -hmm. can just go to apartmentsyndication.com and you'll just watch the proof of funds video because you do compensate them uh, with either ownership or cash for, for that. Okay, so the main lesson, if you're first starting off, don't do a, a non-refund large money deposit. I, I don't recommend doing that, Okay, that's for sure. Sure. A couple other things really quick. We have the best real estate investing best ever conference that is going on. Well, if you're watching this on Facebook, that's going on this Friday, February 24th. If you're listening to us for the, the day this goes live, that's going on today in Denver, Colorado. And either way, I am, you, you can watch the Facebook, watch the, some of the videos that Theo's going to be posting, and he's going to be interviewing people at the conference all day Friday and Saturday, and those videos will be posted at the Joe Fairless uh, Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash meet Joe Fairless, M-E-E-T-J-O-E-F-A-I-R-L-S-S. -S. You can watch some of the um, snippets from the seminar mm -hmm. or conference and also um, hear some interviews. So get exclusive asset access by uh, going there. Anything you want to mention about that? Yeah, as Joe said, I'm going to be interviewing kind of, kind of uh, participants or, or people that are, that are showing up there and asking what they like about it. And so you'll kind of get a semi sneak, sneak peek of, of what the speakers are talking about. And then we, we might record Joe's, Joe's uh, initial talk in the beginning and then yeah so and then it'll take you know images so throughout the day you know, check out the website uh, or check out Joe's, Joe's Facebook page and I'm sure um, for, for most of the Facebook live stuff I think it just sends you a notification on Facebook anyway so you'll know when we're going live and doing those interviews. Sweet. And then the last thing is we do have the book coming out it will for sure come out in March. We're doing another round of revisions and edits to make sure this puppy is going to be even better than volume one. So volume two, best real estate investing advice ever. Volume two, we've got coming out in March. It's going to have interviews with Grant Cardone, interviews with uh, multifamily syndicators, people who have quit their nine to five job and, and become full-time investors and insights actionable insights from those conversations in the book. So it's coming out in March. Be on the lookout for that, and you'll hear first whenever we know the exact date. You'll hear mm -hmm. first via the show. And then, on a personal note, I'm doing my first half marathon in about oh, wow. a month and a half or two months, so I'm in the middle of training program there and looking forward to it. So if anyone has any tips on the half marathon stuff, how to train, what to eat, then email info at joefairless.com. Um, and then I believe, I believe that wraps it up. You got anything else? I do not. All right, best ever listeners. This was wonderful. Hope you have a best ever day, and we'll talk to you soon.